right. Uh, so I'll, if you'll go next. Um, so I'm Rachel Marzak. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm just going to make sure Amy records because I know we wanted to record this. Is that right? Done. Done. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. So I'm Rachel Marzak. I'm a clinical educator and faculty at the uh, College of Nursing uh, and welcome. Uh, uh, let's see, Lisa, you are yep. next. I'm Lisa Taylor. I'm a family nurse practitioner and uh, faculty in the uh, family nurse practitioner program and also share the student success coordinator role. Um, are we popcorning it? Yes. I'll, I'll say Heidi because she's next. Hi, everyone. I'm Heidi Honiger Rogers. I am also a family nurse practitioner and an associate professor in our awesome College of Nursing. I'm um, the director of interprofessional education as well, and really pleased to have you here to talk about this topic. Heidi, would you like to identify? Oh, yes. Um, Felina, if you could go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Felina Ortiz and I'm one of the nurse midwives. I'm one of the faculty as well. And I'm very excited to have you join us and hope that this information session is useful and helpful and encourages you to come and join us at the College of Nursing. Felina, do you wanna pick somebody oh, next? Yeah. Carolyn? Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Carolyn Montoya. I am a New Mexico native. I am the interim executive vice dean at the College of Nursing. I've been here a very long time. I'm, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner as well. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Montoya. Would you like to sure. select Vivian? Sure, I'll go to Vivian. Hey, I'm Vivian. I'm actually a nurse um, working at the VA in primary care. I used to work with Lisa. <laughs> I loved it. And um, I am interested in possibly, I, well, I have 13 years of nursing experience um, just as a registered nurse and I'm interested in, you know, maybe adjunct um, clinical, you know, leading students at a clinical site. Thank you, Vivian. You're welcome. It's great to have us join us today. Would you Thank like you. to choose somebody next to introduce? Um, let me see who else is on here. I don't think I'm seeing all, oh, Sharon. Do you wanna go next? Hi, hi, Vivian, sure. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Sharon Guerra. And I've been a nurse for 33 years. I have my master's degree in nursing administration from the University of New Mexico. Uh, currently, I'm teaching, uh, actually, I'm in West Palm Beach right now. I'm teaching at the Emphony Institute. Um, I'm teaching uh, a couple of RN programs, and I really enjoy education. I've transi transitioned from uh, nursing administration. I was a nursing director at UNMH for about 12 years as a nursing director. And I was also at Albuquerque Public Schools as the director of nursing. Wonderful, Sharon, thank you for joining us. Uh, would you like to pick somebody else? Sure. Let's see. Um, and do we see Felina? I think Felina's gone already. She already has introduced. How about Melody? Melody. Melody okay. Avenue. I, I am so sorry for being late. I had just, I'm with my, my two year old. And so, um, Rachel, what are we doing? Introducing ourselves. So, if you would okay. like to introduce yourself, please. My name is Melody Avila. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I practice uh, with the Adobe program and I teach in the APRN programs. Okay, and Amy, would you like to introduce yourself next, please? 
Sure thing. Um, I'm Amy Levi, and um, I am on the faculty at the College of Nursing in the Nurse Midwifery Education <laughs> Program. And um, I do some other administrative tasks at the um, Health Sciences Center, but we're really excited that you all joined us. And I'm going to keep my um, camera off because I'm trying to send the new Zoom link to other people who had registered. So, um, and I know the light behind me is a little distracting. So welcome to everybody. We're really glad you're here tonight. Thank you. And Janet, Janet Abernathy, you're last. Hi, I'm, I'm Janet Abernathy, and I have my master's in nursing education from UNM. Been a nurse since 1983, and I work full-time at the Cancer Center at UNM, and I'm also teaching uh, fundamentals of nursing uh, clinical and lab for CNM, and I'm going to be the instructor of record this summer for evidence-based practice for the dual degree students. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, wonderful. That sounds really like, yeah, sounds like you have your hands full. So um, I guess I would like to just share a little bit in terms of the uh, process and the development of us designing this Zoom, uh, not really a presentation, but more of an informational uh, uh, presentation. Um, the majority of individuals that are currently on faculty that are attending this uh, Zoom session tonight are part of a committee that's called the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, it's not actually a committee, it's an advisory group. And we have decided uh, through our uh, meetings that uh, we felt it would be very important to begin to reach out to other individuals um, in the community uh, in terms of trying to elicit interest in those who might have some questions about wanting to be faculty. So that's a little bit of the idea and development behind this Zoom session. Uh, so we have decided, we have a little bit of a plan of action tonight, and that is, is that as faculty, <clears throat> excuse me, we decided that we would share a little bit about our development and how it was that we came to be faculty as part of the College of Nursing. So with that, uh, I will go ahead and I'll begin. Uh, my development and into the uh, College of Nursing actually began as a guest lecturer. Uh, this was years ago. I was happened to be working as a mental health consultant with a now retired faculty member by the name of Dr. Wayland, who was working as a disability consultant at the Head Start, City of Albuquerque Head Start. And she asked me if I would present to, uh, she happened to be teaching undergrad courses at the time and asked me if I would present to her undergrad courses on what was at that time the uh, cycle of violence with uh, uh, individuals who were uh, who were involved in domestic violence. So I was a guest lecturer for uh, a, a couple of occasions, and then she asked me if I was interested in applying for a faculty position. So I remember still asking her. I said, "Well, how do I do this?" You know, and she yeah, she's trying to explain to me the steps laying out the steps and shared that I would need to put together a presentation. And I said, well, I have no idea, Jan, what do I even present on? And she said, just present on your philosophy of teaching. So I put together a PowerPoint uh, presentation, uh, presented that in front of a number of colleagues of which many are still as faculty members. And then I was hired and I was hired with the stipulation by the dean, uh, the, the dean at that time that I would pursue my doctorate of which I did. And as a result, I'm still teaching now. My position with the uh, College of Nursing is primarily as a clinician faculty. At the time that I was hired with the College of Nursing, I was hired uh, as a, a to to continue to uh, work uh, at precepting students in my clinical practice. Uh, things have definitely changed since that time. We now have a huge need for 
uh, faculty to be teaching. Uh, we utilize a number, as you are all aware, we utilize a number of preceptors around the city and around the state and in the nurse midwifery program, actually out of state also. I teach in the, um, I do continue to be a guest lecturer, uh, but because I'm primarily uh, working and precepting students in clinical settings, I, I have limited time to teach. Uh, I teach with Dr. Ortiz in the midwifery program in the summer and in the fall. Um, I also, in uh, this past fall, I just I was teaching in the physical assessment course and also just finished teaching in the psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. I am a family nurse practitioner and I'm also a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. So I uh, feel very fortunate that I can cross over and do presentations in both arenas. I really, I really do enjoy my time. It's very worthwhile to be able to precept students and to be able to teach students. And with that, I, I will pass it on to Dr. Ortiz. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing your story. I um, was a midwife practicing at UNM when one of the faculty members had received a HRSA grant to open up that what Rachel was uh, part of that to open up a nurse managed clinic in Sandoval County and I was recruited to the faculty as part of that grant. Um, partly to be a clinical instructor and um, and work with students you know, on the ground um, seeing patients. And through that role, I obtained my doctorate degree and started um, doing more didactic teaching. Um, I have enjoyed um, including being a faculty, I've been a faculty member now for 10 years and I've enjoyed it for a lot of different reasons. Um, I feel like instead of working with one patient at a time, I'm able to help to um, educate and impact students to which will um, affect more patients uh, and have a bigger effect with the patient uh, in the patient role. I've also enjoyed doing both um, didactic teaching and clinical teaching and doing, seeing patients myself. I see patients one day a week. Um, and I've, I am thankful that you're here. <laughs> um, Melanie, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm sorry if I'm, if I seem a little distracted, I have a two-year-old who's enjoying kind of a water center um, and, Right now she's testing whether or not she could fill her mouth with water and we're trying not to drink it. Um, so I, I, my journey kind of started when I was practicing with El Centro as a family nurse practitioner. And I just had this honor of meeting Dr. Rogers while I was there and uh, becoming a faculty really wasn't something that crossed my mind. I was in the process of getting my DNP. I felt very passionate about improving um, my clinical work, doing quality improvement. We were doing projects within El Centro that I was helping with. And so it was that kind of scholarship and research was something that I enjoyed. And I was teaching the high school students about health needs pretty frequently. I was going into the classroom at least once a month and giving different presentations to the high school students. and I. I found that I really enjoyed teaching. I was precepting at that time. And Dr. Rogers is very much like, if you like teaching and you like scholarship, like check this out. And I, I remember talking to my husband and being like, no, it's too good to be true. She's just trying to give me a sales pitch. And uh, sure, I joined, I kind of took this leap. I joined and at this point, I can't really see myself doing anything else. I really like the students that I work with. I um, like that our program is focused in rural health, um, that uh, Dr. Montoya has given me this opportunity to work on program development through the 
through UNM Adobe. And so I get to work with a population that I'm, I care about. I get to work with students, which is always very fun and exciting. Every time we have students starting, um, they remind you how ambitious you can feel about medicine and how hopeful you can feel about the future. And so sometimes I get kind of bogged down with insurance and meeting these roadblocks, but working with students is just fulfilling by itself. So I recommend anyone who's even considering joining faculty to just take that leap. Thank you, Melody. Dr. Taylor, would you like to share you? Your road to the faculty. <laughs> My uh, fascinating road. So um, I am like uh, Dr. Avila. I didn't necessarily see myself teaching. Um, I love being a clinician. Um, my focal area is diabetes. Um, and so I just, I really love helping patients figure out what that means for them and how we can help them manage it. I um, also work in the same clinic as a uh, Dr. Ortiz, um, uh, Dr. Marzek, and um, one of several other clinicians from the, the college. And one of the things I love is I tell the patients, um, I'm going to be your diabetes concierge. But I wouldn't be able to do that had I not accosted uh, Dr. Montoya in the bathroom at a conference about seven years ago. Um, so I had recently moved from uh, Southeast uh, New Mexico, I was practicing in Artesia and I had recently moved to Los Lunas. So I was um, at one of the uh, uh, nurse practitioner conferences making connections. And I had been hearing from other folks in the black community that UNM was not doing a very good job of recruiting, retaining or graduating black students. And I had done some preliminary looking around, couldn't really find anything and um, so when I realized, oh, Dr. Montoya, she teaches at the college. I think she might also be a dean or something. I approached her in the bathroom and just laid that out. And to her credit, um, her eyebrows may have raised up a little bit, but to her credit, she was like, well, let's, let's talk about that. Let's, let's you know, have another conversation. And um, it's nice to meet you because um, I, didn't, I didn't know her. I'd never met her. I didn't really know anything about her. Um, so that began about seven years ago. And um, my path has been non-traditional because I've never taught at the graduate level before I became faculty in the NP program, the APRN programs. I taught at UNMBC in the ADN program. And I, I loved it, but I felt a disconnect because many of them were going to be working inpatient and I had not been inpatient in over a decade. So just felt like you, they needed something more than I could offer. And um, between that period and then meeting Dr. Montoya, um, you know, I just began to think about what is it that I really want to do? I love precepting. Um, I can talk about diabetes until your eyes glaze over. Everyone knows that about me. And uh, I really like seeing students have the light bulb and not just about diabetes, but just that, that light bulb. I love shepherding them along. Um, I call them, you know, our future colleagues because that's what they're going to be. And um, one of the things we were talking about when we were preparing for this meeting is for me, I love teaching. Um, I love quality improvement and research. My other focal area is um, diversity, equity, and inclusion and how that looks in our classes, how that looks in all the things that we expect of our students. Um, and so but the, the, the other piece that I really love about being faculty is literally being paid for intellectual curiosity. I mean, I go to the campus at least once a week and print out a couple of pounds worth of articles on whatever it is I happen to be interested in that week. And I just love that. I just love that as nurses, we're typically curious about all kinds of things. And I tell students all the time, when you stop learning, you die. I mean, not literally, we know that, but you know, it's like, um, so I would just, yeah, I can't imagine doing anything else. I'm like, Dr. Avila, I just, this is my jam. I didn't know it was going to be my jam, but since it took me so long to get here, I tell everyone I'm staying. I'm staying. Yeah. <laughs> That's Thank my story. You. 
Thank you, Dr. Taylor. As you can tell, the, the common thread here is that the faculty really enjoy the teaching and the interactions with the students. And I'm gonna have Dr. Rogers also share what it is that she does and how she came to be doing what it is that she does. And you'll be able to see that thread of commonality is very strong in her story also. Um, thanks, 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 Rachel, and thanks, colleagues. So, um, so I'm I'm Heidi, and I um, I was actually I I had a master's degree as a nurse practitioner, and I was working in a leadership position at Albuquerque Healthcare for the Homeless, and um, I actually was um, the the dean of the College of Nursing at the time, Nancy Ridenauer, reached out because she was going around the community and looking for leaders um, uh, just to see what 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 nurses were doing, and um, and she's the one who really. Um, uh, seated that, or was one of the one of the people that seated that um, that connection. I really felt I feel like getting invited in, or being re and being recognized for the work that we're doing is one component, um, which is why we wanted to come together here um, with you all. Is because um, I think a a big piece of the path to becoming a faculty is actually getting asked and and then getting mentored. Um, so I didn't have a doctorate at the time. And um, and uh, one of the nurses that I had an opportunity to work with, um, Judith Harris, folks um, may remember her, she was going back to school to get a doctorate. Um, and this was in 20, 2012 or 2013. And she, she said, Heidi, can you write me a, a letter of recommendation to go into this doctorate program? And, um, and of course, you know, I was going to write her one and, and I said, oh, I've, I've been feeling like I'm too old to go back in and get my doctorate. And, and Judith said, I'm 67. You are not too old. And so sure enough, I wrote her a letter and then she wrote me one. And the two of us went to, went to our DNP program together. Um, she graduated faster than I did because she's whippers <laughs> just you know she she was great and uh and so i think that's the other piece is that we're never too old to go back and get a doctorate um judith graduated with her doctorate at age 70 um i graduated with mine in my late 40s and um and and you know and then here we are i think it's about getting asked and then um, getting excited one of the things that i do feel and just to echo i was um i worked i had the opportunity to work with people who were experiencing heroin addiction and opiate addiction for a very long time um doing suboxone therapy um, long before nurse practitioners could um, prescribe it so just doing this in collaboration with um, physician colleagues in multiple settings. And I really saw that there was a need for more advanced practice nurses to do that work specifically, because for me, the nursing framework is uniquely suited to working with people who have addiction. It's uniquely suited for a lot of things. Um, and I wanted to help love and encourage more folks into the thing that I was really passionate about at the time. And um, I lost count after 80, but I, I counted to 80 um, the number of students that um, I mentored that ended up um, working in addiction after they were um, students of mine that I had talked to. And I feel I, that's going to be one of my legacies. Um, and it felt really important to mentor the next generation into something that I cared about. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Thank you. I, you know, I think it's really important. Uh, I, and I think when we're just talking about to maybe potential new faculty, they need to hear the different roads that everybody has taken, including from one of our associate deans. And I mean, we have two leaders in the field of nursing with us, Dr. Montoya and Dr. Levi. And so if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about just what you see as the needs for nursing faculty coming up in the future.
So I will let uh, Dr. Levi start and then go from there. I was going to let you go first. Go for it, Dr. Montoya. All right. Um, so I've been um, with the college for a total of 34 years. Um, and I took a break after the first five because I couldn't stand it um, because I'm a clinician. And um, that was really where my heart is at with pediatrics. And um, I'm just very honest about, about how I came into academia. I decided to try it. However, um, I, I had trouble with all of the bureaucracy of it. And so at that time I had my master's degree. I did not have a doctoral degree. And um, so after five years, I found I was, I just wanted to go back to clinical. And so I did. And then after five years, I, um, I kept doing, oh, you know, they kept pulling me back to teach and to teach and to teach. And so um, I finally came back into teaching and stayed now for these years. And so I have been fortunate to have just about every single position possible in this institution at the College of Nursing. And I've seen things change. It used to be that um, you, could, you could get a, a position here um, with a master's degree, and we still hire master's prepared nurses. However, the push is really the doctoral degree. And I was fortunate that I was able to get my doctoral degree um, through a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation program. Um, and so I, I went into that and it actually paid my, my way uh, to obtain the PhD, but I didn't do PhD till much later in uh, my 50s. So uh, again, the, the point that was made here before is you're never too old to go back to school. Um, certainly was challenging, but uh, worked out well. In terms of the future, right now we need lots of nurses. We need experienced clinicians um, who can share their expertise with our students and serve as role models for those students as well. And I think that it's incredibly rewarding to, um, to teach and to, to know that you're preparing the next generation of nurses, whether they are nurses at uh, the bedside in an acute care setting or outpatient setting, or they decide to be an advanced practice nurse. Um, you know, nurses remain the most trusted profession in the country. And for those of you, uh, I'm, I can't imagine that anybody here has not experienced, perhaps not personally, but perhaps uh, with a family member who has had to be hospitalized. And I can tell you from my own personal experience with um, a member of my family who was severely ill, the nurses made all the difference. And that's why I stay committed to this because I believe in the people here in New Mexico. I believe that we um, can take care of our own. And um, I, I remain committed to that. I think it's just so important. Um, and I think we have the resources here and we have the talent here and um, we can improve the health of the people here. Thank you, Dr. Montoya. Dr. Levi? Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I've had a long and winding road and have been in several places in my nursing career. I am a nurse midwife um, and became a nurse, mid, a nurse practitioner in women's health shortly after becoming a nurse. So um, I've been in that clinical setting until I came here to New Mexico 10 years ago. Um, and since I've been here, I've been doing a lot of administration, educational administration. Um, I think that, that we're eager to answer your questions about making the transition into being faculty. And you can tell that we've all had very different um, opportunities to become involved as faculty. 
that um, I had been a midwife for about five years when I joined the faculty at the University of Pennsylvania. And um, like Dr. Montoya, followed the path to a PhD while I was teaching and doing clinical practice um, back when I had more energy than I knew what to do with. Um, so um, in coming here, I've learned a lot about New Mexico. I've learned a lot about nursing education and how nursing education is transformative on so many levels. And being a faculty has um, so many of the same characteristics as providing clinical care. You really get to know people and you get to feel as though, and I know it's because I'm a midwife, but you feel like you're midwifing um, new nurses. You're having an opportunity to be part of the next generation, which I think is one of the reasons that we're eager to engage folks to learn more about what it means to be a faculty person. And we have a really unique opportunity at the College of Nursing because we um, are obviously the, um, the flagship university for the state. And it gives us, um, I think, access to many more resources than lots of other programs have available to them. So um, I'm eager to, first of all, I again want to apologize for our craziness getting this going. And so excited for those of you who have joined us. I see there's someone on the phone. Is that somebody who was here before or is this a new person who's joined recently? Don't know. Okay. Hi. Hi. This is this is Judy Sanchez. I joined just a bit ago. Yay! So glad you're here. Oh, we're really excited. Okay, we, thanks. we were so embarrassed that we had so many Zoom issues. <laughs> oh no, no like, problem. Thanks. I didn't see that it got rescheduled on another line, so I apologize for it being late. No, it's okay. I'm glad you got the text. We're really happy to have you here. Um, and everybody introduce themselves. So you're kind of at a disadvantage because you didn't get to introduce yourself and you don't know who all is here talking at you. Um, but the, there are several of us who are the, um, who make up the diversity, equity and inclusion advisory committee for the faculty at the College of Nursing. And um, uh, we, all told our stories about how we got to be faculty and I was the last one to go. Um, and you're in good company with the three other um, attendees. And I would like to open this up for anyone who has questions, um, anything that we can do to um, help you feel as though you could have a connection to what we've been talking about. And um, I do want everybody to know that we, because we, you registered to be part of this, we will stay in touch with you. That was one of the things that was really important to us in putting this together, was to have an opportunity for us to continue to interact with you so that we could help you find your way to a faculty position if that's what you would like to be when you grow up or not, if that doesn't make sense to you either. So we all wanna hear your story, Judy. I'm going to stop talking now and um, please tell us more about you and what interests you in the conversation we've been having. Okay, well, I apologize if I'm uh, repeating any questions that others may have already asked. I um, graduated with my PhD in nursing last summer and um, my prior experience had been in healthcare administration in a hospital setting. So, you know, I was able to listen to Heidi's presentation and um, Carolyn and yourself. So I, I didn't get to hear anybody else, but I, I you know, I always had this personal, de personal desire to go back uh, for a PhD. I had just such a great admiration for so many nurses who, 
sort of had that had that um, degree and influenced me and my interests in many, many ways. So uh, that being said, I finished last summer and I have been interested in opportunities for uh, nurses with a PhD. I'm not sure that uh, there are really any avenues for a person like myself who does not have any type of um, academia experience. And so I, I'm not sure if this is, that's why I just wanted to listen when I had, when I received the email, wanted to listen to see what possibly may be out there for me. And maybe this is something that might be available. And if not, maybe, you know, I can explore other opportunities. Wonderful, Judy, thank you for that question. Uh, one of the things that, uh, well, for, just for an example, when this is Rachel Marzek. Uh, when I first started describing my initiation into being asked to uh, apply for a faculty position, I actually started as a guest lecturer. And I did not have any experience as, uh, as an educator. Uh, so it's been just kind of little pieces along the way and, and, and working with individuals who do have experience and being educators and, and listening to them and just, you know, it's step by step. I'm not sure that that answers your question completely, but I do think that there is certainly ways to be able to get experience. And it's not just also about throwing you into a class. That is also one thing that we wanted to discuss today is by sharing that one of our ideas was to be able to also provide mentorship to individuals who are possibly interested in, uh, in, in an education position with the uh, College of Nursing. I'd also like oh, sorry, go ahead. Add, oh, I'm sorry. I'd, I'd also just like to add, I, when I joined the faculty, I had no, I, I had no desire. I didn't even, I had no desire to become faculty. I was working in the clinic as a midwife. And then, like I had said earlier, I got recruited. Um, and when I got my doctorate degree, they told me like they want me in the classroom and I didn't think I wanted to be in the classroom. And the um, midwife that I was working with at the time said, why don't you just sit in the classroom? And I felt like uh, I was very intimidated and this was 10 years ago and I felt very intimidated. And then I sat in the classroom and I realized I had a lot to offer students. And so my, um, education or educator um, capacities have been on the job and I've been very supported by other faculty in helping me to to learn that role so and uh, this is Lisa I will add on to that because I had never taught at the graduate level before I became faculty at uh, UNM and um, have learned so much from my colleagues. Um, mentor, they have mentored me, um, observing how they put lessons together or lectures together, how they deliver that information to students in a way that helps them understand. And for me, it was important to get some foundational courses around how does one teach? Because in my DNP program, I know some offer uh, courses around how to teach, um, I did not have those classes. So I am uh, doing what we call a certificate. So I'm taking some courses through uh, the Masters of Nursing Education uh, program in order to have some foundation. And as I've told students in, that, in those courses with me, simply because I have a DNP does not mean I know how to teach. So um, it's, it's a wonderful place to be able to um, be mentored by master teachers, take courses that will also help you uh, do guest lectures. Most of our courses at the graduate level are team taught. So that's also really nice to not have to jump into a class that you have no idea what's going on. Um, so I just wanted to add those, those pieces. 
Thank you, Dr. Great, Taylor. Thank you. Appreciate that. I think that's a really important um, point that you just made, Lisa. We're all clinicians first. We didn't get into this to be teachers. And those of you who've had the experience of getting the MSN in education and nursing, I think, probably have a leg up. A lot of us had to learn along, along the way. Um, and I think having, it, I, I really applaud you, Lisa, for taking that on because learning how to do things like write curriculum and um, make up tests and all of that kind of stuff. I see Melanie grinning, Melody grinning like, yep. <laughs> the things you don't learn in nursing school that you have to know how to do to be a good instructor. I also yeah. want to say something. Oh, go ahead, Melody. I just want to reflect on, I, I'm someone that did not have an education or teaching background, right? Um, and so I will say that one really amazing thing with the College of Nursing is I was partnered with somebody early on. I was partnered with Dr. Shannon and she showed me all of the ropes. She shared all of her teaching material with me. She took time. I remember the first year of us creating group presentations like side by side on deciding how we determine points. And so even though you start on this journey, like you know, we are all in this boat together. And I think all of us have a very similar mission of we want to improve care in New Mexico. And we really want to help these future clinicians have a very solid foundation. And so with that in mind, we work together as a good team. So I just mock myself out. Oh. Is that me? Also, hi, hi, Amy, we can hear you. Can you hear me? What? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hi. How are you? Welcome. This is Rachel Marzak. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Welcome. Uh, we all have gone through introductions. I'm glad you could join us. Would you just introduce yourself, please? Yeah, my name is Amy Sollers. Um, I went to UNM in 2018 and graduated with my um, BSN, and I'm currently going to Walden University, and I'll be graduating here in August with a uh, master's in uh, FNP. Wonderful. Congratulations. You're almost done. Thank you. Yes. Um, are, so are you New Mexican based or are you living somewhere out of state? No, I'm in Rio Rancho. <laughs> okay. Okay. <Yeah. laughs> well, welcome. You know, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. So one of the things that we have done is that we have um, this group. I'm not sure. Um, are you joining us by phone? Are you joining us? Zoom connect in terms of just uh, video and audio? I'm not really sure. I think it's just audio. Okay. I was just trying to connect any way I could. <laughs> okay. So we have gone around the room and we've shared, each of us have shared a little bit of our stories and how our road to becoming faculty and how, and it's differed with each individual who has spoken. Um, so we are open to questions at this point in time. We also have Dr. Montoya who has joined us and also Dr. Levi who has also joined us. So um, I don't know if you remember uh, Dr. Rogers and Dr. Ortiz. They were here as faculty also back when you were here in 2018. You know, um, I don't know if I recognize those two names but Dr. Montoya, yes. So, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any questions in terms of just thoughts about becoming a faculty? I mean, you were drawn to join this Zoom for whatever reason, and we're glad that you have. But do you have any specific questions? Well, um, yeah, I, you know, honestly, I did, I did join this Zoom because I was hoping to get information on, uh, I saw that there was a, um, registering for like a mentorship and I was interested in that particular um 
feature. So, you know, I haven't heard of anything like this before. So I was, I was like, wow, this seems really interesting. Um, it's something that I did want to do, you know, later down the road after I, you know, graduated. So, and, you know, also obviously get some experience. Yeah, I, that's great. Yes. And we have spoken a little bit about that mentorship and the value of it being is that you, of course, wouldn't be thrown into a class, but you would be working with somebody. Uh, okay. okay, so um, possibly we can get your contact information or you can get our contact information. And yeah, once you're done good. with your F&P program, if you could reach out to us. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I'll just say, um, uh, Amy Levi sent an email out to all of the folks that we thought were registered for tonight's um, clinic. If you got that email, all of us are on it. Um, if you okay. did it, can you tell us now that you were not on that email? Okay, let me check real quick and okay. see. Just real and, quick. And that's the same for you, Janet and Sharon, um, Vivian and Judy. Were you on that email? Yes, I got it. This is Judy. I received an email from Felina. Is that the one? Uh, yeah. Did you That's receive an email from Did you receive an email from Amy Levi saying new Zoom link? Uh, it was. It uh, might have been forwarded to me from Felina, I believe. Yeah. I yeah. She wasn't on Amy's email. Okay. I'll I'll add her okay. information to the others. Okay, and you have Judy's information. And then Vivian and Sharon, you were on that email? Uh, yes. yes. Yep, all set. Thank you so much. Cool. I received well, an email from Amy Levi, so I believe so. Okay, perfect. So we'll send an email out um, just sort of identifying all of us, and then you, you will have our information as well. Um, so okay. Yeah, so mine actually came from the University of New Mexico is what it said. Um, so it must have been the original email uh, where you sign up. I haven't gotten anything other than that. I just got a, got a, a link at about 6.30 or so this, this evening, and I was trying to get on, but I wasn't able to get on through text message. So that's how I was able to join. Thanks. Um, Amy, do you want to just tell us what your email is and we'll add Sure. Okay. So um, it's Amy Sollers, S O. L L A R S at outlook.com. Okay, perfect. So yeah. we'll make sure we're all connected. Um, okay, thank you. thank you. I'm always the logistics person. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Amy. I just wonder if there's any further questions from uh, our attendees or <laughs> our any of our participants. Yeah, Rachel, I'd like to say something about um, doctoral education, if I could. Um, you know, a PhD is a research degree, and it teaches mm -hmm. you to be a research, and it's a way to help you develop a program of research. And a DNP is not a research degree. It actually was a degree devised for nurse practitioners, and um, it's kind of morphed into a degree that also is um, preparing people for administrative roles and healthcare organizations and doing policy as well. But there's really no degree beyond the master's in nursing for education. And, you know, like medicine, nursing has never really identified what it takes to be an educator. Now, I know that um, Tamara Shannon, Dr. Shannon, has um, actually done a specialty in education in her DNP program. So if any of you are thinking about a DNP as a way to um, get into education, I would have really um, support your looking into programs that support the development of education, at development of you as an educator. Um, you know, I think nurses are do a lot of education in what they do. And I think Dr. Montoya and I probably, we're doing a lot of education as nurse, 
practitioners. I'm a nurse midwife as well in our clinical roles. And um, life just took me away from research until I came back here. And then life took me away from research again. So I think that the, um, the universe does not want me to be a researcher. I've really tried. Um, I'm glad to see, Sharon, that your PhD is in nursing education, because I think that that is a distinctive area that we don't really support nursing education as well as we should. So oh, thank you. I'm not quite done yet, but mm -hmm. I'm on my last class and thinking about my dissertation work. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you for that. But uh, I've been teaching online. It's really been an interesting development with teaching online during COVID. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the number of hours teaching to get the requirements in. Um, but, you know, you really have to have a passion and a desire. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I think a lot of people who go into teaching think, well, it's going to be so much easier than clinical work because I won't have to work weekends and evenings and holidays. But the reality is, if you're a scholar, you're always committed to that work. Yeah, right? very true. <laughs> and yeah. so um, our scholarly pursuits never leave us. Um, <laughs> it looks like Rachel really wants to say something. Well, I wasn't. I didn't. Just oh. keep going. Oh, oh, you! I thought you were raising your hand. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that out because I know not all of you are doing doctoral work or even think of doctoral work in your future. The most important thing is to identify what you need to become an educator because it is more than clinical work. It is more than teach back as um, you do in the clinical area. Um, and I think that we can have more in-depth conversations with you about that going forward. Um, I know a couple of you, Amy and Judy, got on to the call late. And one of the reasons we put this presentation together was because we're committed to staying in touch with you and helping you shape your future as a faculty person. So um, Judy, I don't know if you had a chance to register. I didn't see your name on the registration roster. Um, so if you could just put your email in the chat, I'll make sure that you are on the roster and that um, one of us will be getting in touch with you after this evening's discussion. Judy's on the phone, okay, so I think she's going to have to uh, tell us what oh, it is. Okay, yes. Could you tell us your email then? Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, yes, this is Judy Sanchez. I did register on, um, on the link. But I can, because I'm on the phone, I'll just go ahead and send it to Selena, I guess. So far, she's the only one I have an email from. Yeah, and I could, I'll forward it to you, Heidi, so that it's all together. And That's yeah, I think great, just forward thank it, you. Forward it to, yeah, um, forward it to Amy. But um, uh, Judy, I saw when I got the email that was the reply, it says Felina Ortiz is inviting you to a Zoom meeting, but it's actually a no reply at Zoom. Um, so, um, why don't you just go ahead and send it to, um, uh, H Rogers one H R O G E R S one at salude.unm.edu. And I'll, I'll put the list together. Okay. I'll do that. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry about the, we're recording all of this, um, administrative fluff. <laughs> we'll get everyone connected. Rachel, I remember that we were talking about um, maybe wanting to have folks identify who they may want to reach out to that are, are in the room here. Um, so I wonder if we just want to go around and, and just talk about what's the kind of work that we've been doing or, or we're doing in education, just so that the, our guests are, um, can self-identify who they want to um, you know, spend some extra time with. Um, does that sound like yeah, that sounds great i was going to also ask if they might be willing to share what their area of interest are women's health or you know pregnancy that type of thing so um i'm going to just pick on somebody janet 
would you mind starting just sharing a little bit of where your areas of interest are? Well, yeah, no, I, I don't mind sharing. Um, I am certified in healthcare quality. So my background, I started out in critical care long, long ago, um, and then did occupational health, infection control, some other baby unit um, work. And then I went into quality and risk management. And I found that to be incredibly rewarding because in quality, you have to be kind of a jack of all trades um, because incidents happen and project improvement, quality improvement happens everywhere. So you have to be able to kind of look at all of those things. And I find that um, often that kind of background is sort of discounted by other nurses as not being clinical. That's what I've been told. And um, so it, it's interesting. So I'm, I have been doing quality in different venues, in acute care hospitals, and now at the cancer center. I'm also serving as the patient advocate. And um, I am very interested in quality improvement. And I teach the PDSA class for UNM um, in UH. And I just, I like evidence-based practice. It's kind of what I do, so. Um, I see that as being just as clinical as being at the bedside in a very different way. Um, that's what I'm doing. And I'm studying for my certification now as a nurse educator. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you know what? Just being in clinical practice, I, I, I can remember on a couple of occasions having individuals come from the hospital to help us out as clinicians. Uh, it's tough. It's difficult as a clinician to try to wrap your head around it. So, so good teachers are really important. So evidence-based practice and the QI. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you, Janet. Sharon, would you be willing to share a little bit of where your interest is? Amy? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I probably also have kind of like a well-rounded background. Um, I started off in, in college oncology um, and from there uh, did medical sur surgical, um, women's surgical services. And then I did med surge for a very long time. Um, also did hospice as an outpatient case manager for a while and then went back into um, bedside care in the hospital. Um, I've been mostly, I would say, probably hospital bedside nurse. So a lot of um, inpatient uh, committees uh, in a hospital setting, um, a lot of safety um, has been a big focus over the years, of course. And just a lot of different kinds of projects um, that I've kind of helped to develop. Um, also, EMRs, um, getting those in place and being a uh, to-go person for those in an inpatient setting. Um, most recently, I was in ICU for probably about 10 years. Um, I've done a lot of precepting throughout my nursing career, and I've just always loved that part of it. Um, also, most recently, I would say hospice inpatient is where I've been, and I did that in the past, and I've kind of come for full circle to that, and I just feel like maybe that's my place. I've done a lot of different things, but I feel like um, palliative care and maybe hospice. I did also have my certification at one point, um, so that's kind of where I would like to focus um, as an NP after I graduate. Um, so that's kind of where I would probably be. Um, as far as teaching though, I probably would like to either, you know, um, just get a little, like I said, um, experience under my belt, but I would be really happy to um, probably teach uh, future NPs 
Um, I there isn't a class that UNM had that I didn't love though. I love genetics, uh, community, um, population health. I just gosh, I really liked that. So there, there's a lot of things that I really enjoy. Um, as far as research, um, I'm really interested in that as well. I did want to go, I kind of was on the fence. I wasn't sure maybe uh, what a certification in um, education, a master's, like a post-certification, would that be more beneficial um, rather than a DNP? But I kind of was heading towards the DNP because that just seems to be the way to go. But I'm really glad that you kind of had voiced your opinion about that. And, and basically that there's not a lot of guidance on what to do, you know, as the next step. So that's kind of my thoughts. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Vivian? Yeah, so um, my background initially was in orthopedic nursing and, and spinal surgery. Um, so a lot of med surge experience, and then I transferred to telemetry inpatient um, cardiac nursing, and then um, ended up going into the primary care clinic. Um, so my role now is what I call the air traffic controller of the primary care area um, in helping patients um, navigate the VA system. I have precepted for many, many years um, since I've been at the VA and really enjoy that one-on-one -on -one interaction. But um, now that I've gained my nursing master's in nursing education, I'm looking forward to like an, I forget who said it, but another um, faculty member said that you can affect multiple um, people at one time instead of it being just the one on one interaction. So um, just letting my ideas and in my way of practicing, um, let that affect, you know, students in a positive way. I have just such a great passion for that. I would love to go ahead and get my doctorate, but I'm not sure. Um, when I'm going to be able to do that with my family. I have a young child, so, but I love research. Um, the, my focus of my master's um, thesis was uh, to, to study how veterans were affected by COVID and their psychosocial aspects. Um, so I developed education to, um, mitigate some of the negative impacts that they had had and and it showed positive effects for them so that was a fun fun project for my master's degree but I can't wait to to go further in research so that's a passion of mine as well but. thank you Vivian um let's see Sharon I keep missing you I wonder if you are still on Hi, yes, I'm sorry. I was just finishing up a homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Please do share your areas of interest. Um, you know, I was just thinking um, my areas of interest would be um, probably the undergraduate program. And uh, my daughter actually is graduating from UNM uh, next month. And I've kind of gone through this journey with her and it's been really exciting. And so I kind of have an interest in working with the beginning students. Yes, uh, and she's graduating from where, which, uh, which college? Uh, you guys, University of New Mexico. Oh, okay. But I mean, is she in the nursing program? She is. Wonderful, that is great. <laughs> She that is. is great. Um, and Judy, I think you are last, huh? Um, yes, I, my nursing background had been primarily in medical surgical nursing and GYN surgery. So primarily focused on post-operative care on the inpatient hospital setting. Um, but really the majority of my experience have, has been in hospital administration. Um, my master's is, uh, has a focus on nursing administration. And of course my PhD, it was a 
my dissertation was a um, quantitative study. So I have a deep interest in research and a passion for that aspect of, of um, study, probably statistics. Um, I don't know, just prob probably not sure yet, truthfully. I, I hear you. I hear you. It's easy to be, yeah, it's easy to like a lot of things, isn't it? And when it comes to nursing. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we have it seven, it's 730. I think we've come to the end here of our Zoom informational session. Is there any last minute questions that we could answer? I believe we have your contact info, and so we will be in contact with you. And thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have you join us. And we look forward to just having an ongoing relationship with you. Thank you so much thank for taking for time this evening. This Thanks for joining us. It was wonderful to have you all. Yeah, thank you. We look forward to connecting more. That's right. Connecting and reconnecting and then luring you in. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for